Hey guys, welcome to part three of the Dodge Transporter build. They say things must get worse before they get better. So check it out, we're on a property here where there's a, a bit of a truck graveyard and uh, it looks like we sourced ourselves some wheels. You recall from last time we were in a bit of strife without them. So come and check out what we're picking up, eh? So we've uh, picked up ourselves a 50s era Chevy truck chassis. Don't really care much for the chassis, but we may be able to use some of our cross bracing. But most importantly, we've got ourselves some really big wheels and they fit the 8.25 by 20 inch tire, which is exactly what we want. So we're gonna get this motor and box out because we bought Sands motor and box, then we'll load him up. off. Make sure I've got clearance on the trailer. There's always a plan B.
Just like that, we've got our plan B. That's us, ready to go. And well righty -o. we're back at home base now. We're going to jack the front end of this chassis up, whack these tyres back on, drop it down, and then drive the trailer straight out from underneath, and then push it straight up the driveway with any luck. Right, uh, with the chassis chained up to some rando's van, uh, we should be able to pull it straight out. And here we are, some sort of madness. We have three chassis in the garage. God fucking help us. Right Righto guys, we've got three truck chassis in a residential driveway right now, so shit's getting out of control. What I'm gonna do is give you a quick run through what we're now gonna do to take care of it. We've gotta to try to get rid of at least two of these by the end of this episode. And I've also come up with a issue regarding the parts truck. It's actually not a 33. From a bit of research, it actually turns out that it's a 36. So I'm gonna run through some of those differences with you and the inadvertent benefits we've got as a result. Check it out. Now, as we look from the front, we can see that the front axles are in line with each other. And as we work our way through to the back, the rear axles are also in line. So both chassis are exactly the same length as are the wheelbase. However, as we start from the back, we can see our little circled area here. Both of these line up exactly the same at the rear diff mounts. Then as we swing forward to the front mounting point for the spring pack, they also line up exactly the same. However, as we now move forward towards this cross brace, on the 36 truck, it actually sits about 20 centimeters further forward as does the next cross member. And as a result of this, the motor and box also sits forward. So whilst we have both axles on the front in alignment with each other, if we actually take a closer look, both cross members, whilst in alignment with the motors, on the 36, it sits further forward. And so as a result, you may be wondering what those kinds of differences mean in regards to being our inadvertent advantage. So because we have those cross members and the engine sitting further forward on the 36, it actually gives about 20 centimetres more tray room. And here's how it actually comes about. So when we look at the side profile of these front fenders on the 33 to 35, this part is identical. However, the fender sticks out about 15 to 20 centimetres coming forward. So we end up with a rather snub fender as a result from the 36. When we look at both of our grill shells side by side, they do still take exactly the same kind of profile and shape, so that's not a problem. 
and the hood and bonnet shape is exactly the same length as well as the cab so that's also not a drama. So this means on our 35 chassis we need to take these mounts for the cab and move them forward about 20 centimetres and we need to shift our front cross member forward as well. We need to swap over our fender mounts of course and the result of this should see this middle cross member staying put due to the size of the F350 power stroke motor and box so we shouldn't have to eliminate that anymore and we can still retain this cross member in place and as a result we end up with an extra 20 centimeters on the tray and we'll have our fenders from the 36 working well with our 35 setup. And as for our Chevrolet chassis, we've got a really big spring pack here, which is what we want to raise the back end. We've also got a really sturdy mounting bracket here, which actually curves underneath the chassis, unlike the ones that go straight on the side of the Dodge. So we'll look at using these. We've also got quite a few solid cross braces here. Moving to the front, we have at least two of them with some curvature, which may well come in handy for the power stroke motor and box. And we also have another one here with a bit of a curvature, which could also come in handy as well. And we may well also find that some of the brake and steering components will also work well with the canter setup, but we will end up stripping everything out. We'll dismantle this chassis completely and we'll keep everything set aside for later. And so on that note, it's time to get this Chevrolet chassis gone. Alright guys, what I thought I might do is just take this quick opportunity to show you how we're pulling this chassis rail apart. They're all blind rivets on everything, there's no nuts and bolts in this. So we're using a combination of the angle grinder and the drill and we'll show you what they're looking like. So on the areas with limited access, we're actually using the drill bit along here for the spring mount. You can see I've left one intact and you can see the rest have all been drilled out. And as we move to the top, we're using the grinder where there's nice and easy access. So let's pop those out now, shall we? And so just like that, we'll take care of all these blind rivets in that same manner and we'll have this pulled apart in no time. One chassis down, one to go. Happy bloody days. Rightio guys, onto the pointy end with the 36 chassis. We're not gonna cut it up like we did with the Chevrolet. We've got a total of 10 brackets that we've got to remove from this chassis. We're gonna keep the rest of this chassis all together. We need to get the steering functioning. We wanna get the rear wheels turning because at the end of the day, we don't know what else we're gonna need off this. And rather than pull it all apart, it's a lot easier to keep and store in one piece. 
and when we finish this project, look, we'll either look at selling it off or keeping it as yard art. So in the meantime, we've got to take the bits that we want off. Let's get it sorted. And as we go through our brackets, we need to take this one here, which may serve as a shock mount in future. We also need to get the rear cabin mounts off on each side. And of course, the two running board mounts on each side. And finally, the front fender mount. So as soon as we get those uh, five pieces off on each side, we can then turn our direction to the steering. And of course, this diff, which still refuses to turn. And here's our nice little pile of brackets, all sorted. So moving forward, we've got to take care of the steering. We've applied a bit of heat to the steering knuckle here, and we've got some movement now. We can see the pitman arm is shifting, but the steering box is locked up. My thoughts are that this lock up is caused due to the rust and swelling around the top here. So we'll cut this out of shaft off, and then we'll see how we go. We go. Got ourselves some steering now. Happy days. Now it's time to move on to this locked rear end. We're going to start by popping out these axles on both sides. Hopefully, it's going to start free spinning when we turn on the drive shaft. If that doesn't turn, that's not the worst case scenario. We can still leave these axles unbolted. Our main priority is going to be to get these drums free and make sure the bearings in these hubs are turning. Very stuck centre, not wanting to play the game. Not sure yes, anyway. There you go. Fortunately, no life out of these drums yet. Oh, here we go. Driver side's good. Look at that. Beautiful. Here we go. 
is the last of our 36 gear. Time to get it going. Here we are guys, we are now back down to just the one chassis. Happy bloody days. We've now got a whole heap of really good parts that we've got. We can now literally get this project up and rolling. Now we're getting close to nailing down a name. I think we're gonna probably put up a poll in the next few days of some of our favorites and get you guys to vote on it. Maybe a secondary poll depending on how it all pans out. But uh, hopefully in the next episode or two, we will be able to christen this truck with something really cool. Now, a few of you have also been asking about the Landau project. It has not been forgotten, but because we did pick up this truck by chance, we need to make sure that it's up and rolling first before getting back to the Landau. We also have a little bit of a side project. If you look behind me there, we've got a 5.8 litre Fairmont gear. Now, the reason that I've got the gear is because the Ratty Ute here is starting to get a little bit rusty. I've got some concerns for registration. So the V8 gear is probably gonna be a temporary uh, probably actually a 12 month replacement tow vehicle while we do some work on the Ratty. So moving forward after the next two or three episodes we'll probably be swapping between the three projects and that'll give you guys a chance to mix it up as well as for us so it doesn't get too boring. Now as usual don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Everything helps the channel grow. Catch you on the next one guys. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what you had in mind if you're talking about condoms, but uh, count me out. <laughs> With an oversized man. Hey. Nothing. What was that? Nothing. Hey? Nothing. You sure? Yeah. I'll be checking it later. <laughs> You'll need margin for error. So keep going. Focus. What? Focus. What do you got to say? Are you trying to say something, right? Concentrate. Are you? <laughs> oh, oh, straight in the gut, it's a gut punch. Oh, are you, you alright mate? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but now you've got somebody with brains. Yeah, that's a lie. That's a massive fucking lie. Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh, fucking hell, God. <laughs>